So since I made my last video about Twitter scraping, so many things happened. Like Elon bought Twitter, changed his name to X, and then did his best to shut down free scraping from Twitter. And apparently in 2024, that's one of the hardest things to do, to get data from Twitter. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I managed to get data from the website. And along the way, I also show you some tips and tricks to hopefully prevent you from getting banned and also how to handle rate limit exceptions. So let's get started. In the terminal, I type pip install tweetkit. This is the package we are gonna use to scrape Twitter data. Now, I create a new file, call it main.py. Then I do the imports. I do from tweak it, import client. This is a class helps us to interact with Twitter and get data from it. And to handle rate limit errors, I import too many requests. Then we also need some other imports, import time, from date time, import date time import csv then from config parser import config parser and lastly from random import rand init now i type the constants that i need which is minimum tweets and let's start with 10 later we're going to increase it to higher numbers and also for our query Let's just start with something really simple, chat, GPT. Then later again, we're going to make the query more complex. Next step is to import our login credentials. Now, I highly suggest you to create a secondary Twitter account that if it gets banned, it's still okay with you. During making the materials for this video, I had several accounts getting banned. So I always made a secondary account to make sure everything is fine. Then we put the credentials of that Twitter account over here. So I make a new file, call it config.ini. Let's inside of it create a section called X, put username over here put password over here and also put the email address over here let's say xxx sign xx.com after you type your credentials over here you can just close it and come back to the code now that we have the credentials in config file i will start reading it over here so first i create an instant of config parser then i read my config ini file and then I start creating the variables that I need. So username is config from the X section, username, then email, and then password. Next, we should authenticate to the website. So authenticate to x.com. Now, there are two methods that we can authenticate. The first method, of course, is to use the login credentials. And the second method is to use cookies. What we do is first we log in to the website once using the credentials, then we save cookies and then from then on, we will just use those cookies to always have access to the website and get the data. So what I do is now to create a client instant. And I pass the language to be English. US. Next, I do client.login. Authentication info one is username. Authentication info to is email, and then we pass the password. And then I do client that save cookies, and I save the cookies into a JSON file. Now, when I run this piece of code, we will have a cookies.json file over here added. So I do in the terminal python main.py. And there it is. Now we have a cookies file over here. 
From now on, we are going to just use these cookies to have access. So I go back to the code. I comment out these two lines. And I do client.load cookies. Next step, let's yeah, get some data. So we do get tweets. So I do tweets is equal to client that search tweets. Then I pass the query over here. And then the second one is product which we could have either the latest media or top tweets. Let's start with top. And then I do for tweet in tweets. Tweet is a complicated object. So to print it, I do print vars of tweets. So it will convert it into a dictionary. And let's just break the loop over here. So we only see one tweet and it's all details. So now Back to terminal, I run the code. And there we have it. So we got one tweet over here. This is really dense. There is a lot of data over here. This is user that could give you the ID or for example, name of the user over here and so many more data. So we can grab all of this data over here. So I just clear this terminal, go back to my code. Instead of converting the tweet to a dictionary, what I will do is to get the important information over here. So before everything, I just create a tweet count constant, set it to equal to zero. Then every time we get a tweet, I increase that number by one. Then I get the tweet data. Let's create a list. We put tweet count, tweet that user that name, tweet that text. Let's say tweet that created at. Let's also put how many retweets it had, and also how many likes it had. So we get all of this data over here. Then I just print the tweet data. Let's run again the code. And there it is. So we got one tweet from Tim Paul. It has 444 retweets and almost 3000 likes, which is great. Now let's, instead of one tweet, let's see more than one. So instead of breaking, let's print all of the tweets. And at the end, let's just print how many tweets we got. Normally I like to print out the time. Let's say done. Got this amount of tweets. Now we rerun the code. So at the end, we received 19 tweets. One issue that we have so far is that we didn't use this minimum tweets over here. 10 is okay. What if we wanted 30? Then we didn't get it over here. So to solve that, after I create the tweet count constant, I initialize tweets as none. Then I write a while loop while tweet count is less than minimum tweets. Let's bring all of this piece into a while loop. Then we say if tweets is none, We search for tweets. So let's get this one, bring it inside here. Let's also do a print over here so we see where we are getting tweets. If tweets is not none, that means we already did one round of search. So I do print date time, getting more tweets, or let's instead call it getting next tweets. Because what we will do is to write tweets equal to tweets that next. So if I run this piece of code, now we should get at least 30 tweets. There we have it, we got 39. At some point, we got 19 tweets, and then we went for the next batch of tweets until we got 39 tweets. So still there is one problem over here that we have is that sometimes this dot next method 
returns empty results because there were no more results to get. So to handle that, we say if we didn't get any tweets, say that no more tweets were found and then break our while loop. We still have one more issue over here is that every time we are calling this dot next method immediately, that can be alarming to Twitter because there are so many calls one after another, which can easily flag our account and get banned. So later I'm going to show how to make this a bit better. So hopefully we don't get banned immediately. But before that, let's save our tweets into a CSV file rather than just printing. So for that, up here, before our authentication, we start creating a CSV file. So we open a CSV file called tweets.csv. We open it into a write mode and we name it file. And then we create a writer instant for that. Then we write the column names over here. Now I don't like NO, I just put tweet count, the username, the text created at, number of retweets and number of likes. That's nice. Then down here, instead of printing tweet data, we write it into a CSV file. So we open the tweets.csv file into the append mode and we start writing the rows. Again, we create a writer instant for the file and then we write a row which has the tweet data over here. And then let's also over here add a print instant just to see how many tweets we get in each loop over here. Let's close it here. That's great. So now when I run this code, we will get all of the data and save it into a CSV file. So I just clear over here, Python main.py. We got 19 tweets in the first iteration, then 39 tweets, then done. Now we have this tweets.csv file over here. If I open it, all of the data is here. 39 tweets. Great. So I close this. So now we have a functional piece of code. We can get whatever amount of tweets we want and then write it into a CSV file. The next step is try to modify the code in a way to simulate a human behavior. So hopefully we just don't get banned immediately by Twitter. For that, I'm going to add some delays to this piece of code before calling the Twitter API. So first, let's just clean up a bit this code. I take this piece of code. I cut it and create a function. So I say tweets is equal to get tweets and I pass over here tweets. Now I need to define this get tweets function. So I go at the beginning of my code after the constants, I do def get tweets and I paste our code over here. Then at the end, I return tweets. So we still didn't do anything. We just created a new function. Now, every time before getting new tweets, I add some delay. So I go to my get tweets function over here. First, we do a search, which is fine. Then I create a random wait time. So I call it wait time. It's a random number from five to 10. So then I say getting new tweets after wait time seconds. Then we do time.sleep and we wait for that amount of time before calling the next method. Now let's go instead of 30, call 100 tweets and run again our code. So we get 19 tweets, then we wait for eight seconds. Then we call for the next piece of data. We got 39 tweets. Then again, we wait for eight seconds and we just continue this loop until we get the 100 tweets that we want. 
Finally, after calling the API for six times, we got 119 tweets. And if we again check our tweets.csv file, we should have 119 tweets over here. There it is. Now, if we start increasing this number of tweets to, for example, 1000, there will be some moment that we had already called so many times the Twitter API in a row. So what happens, we will get a rate limit exception. So we have to also handle that in our code. So I go down here where we are getting tweets instead of getting the tweets directly, we use try and accept method. So we first, we try get tweets. But if we got a too many requests exception, we write it as E. We can type rate limit reset equal to date time that from time stamped E dot rate limit reset and then print rate limit reached instead of reset at that time I type waiting until then we do wait time equal to rate limit reset minus date time now. So that's the amount of time we have to wait until everything is fine. So we wait until that by calling the time.sleep method. And we wait for the amount of wait time that total seconds. And then after that's done, we just continue our loop. So this way we should be able to handle this exception. Now we try to get 1000 tweets related to chat GPT. So I open my terminal, let's clean it up and start our code. So we finally got it, 1016 tweets. It took quite a lot of time, I think like 10 minutes. And at some point we also hit the rate limit and we waited until the rate limit got reset so we could again get new tweets. So this way we can now get the data from the Twitter and hopefully not to get banned. Now the last piece that I promised to you was to create a more complex query over here. So let's try to get 10 tweets from Elon Musk account. For creating complex queries, there is a really nice article by the developer Twitter team, and I put the link to that article down below the like button. Now there is a more easy way of creating complex queries, and for doing that, you can go to the X website. Here is my account, and then search for something random. Let's say coding, Let's say coding 101. And then over here, hit on advanced search and then create your search query. Let's say we want to search any type of tweets in English from Elon Musk. And let's make it from a specific date. Let's say January 1st, 2018 to January 1st, 2020. So I just hit search and there we have it. Here is our query. I just copied this over here, bring it inside the code and then run the code. Done. Now if I open this tweets.csv, we see we got all the tweets from Elon Musk. So that's how I get my Twitter data in 2024. It's not easy. We had to use a lot of tricks here and there to make it work. At least it's for free and we don't have to pay $100 per month to get this data. I hope it was useful for you and it can help you in your projects. If you liked it, please like the video and subscribe. Thanks for watching and happy scraping.